time. I got my Brugger's bagel, my lox with avocado and uh, red onion on an Asiago. Am I saying that right? Asiago bagel. And um, I'm going to watch this bullshit. You know, here's the thing. Uh, um, because I've watched this much of it so far, right? Like 19 minutes and 40 seconds, roughly. All right, this is a Canadian woman who, as far as we can tell, does not actually participate in any Muslim religious c ceremonies. At all. Now, I live in Orange County, California. There are quite a few Muslim women in my community who participate in activism and the political party, and uh, they are not watch. They're not wearing hijabs, but I know for a fact that they are religious and they attend ceremonies. And they practice, right? So all of this performative bullshit is exactly that. It's performative bullshit. All right, let's see what Jordy's got to say about this. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Food Network. Happy Friday. So as we all know, Chantal is back in Canada, no longer in the Middle East. She has returned to the Great White North in order to take advantage of Canada's free health care. Well, free. Canada's... Mm -hmm taxpayer-funded health care right. because she has told us recently that she is interested in getting WLS and uh, she wants to get some things under control. Yeah, but it's like she also said that it's going to take two to three years just to get in for a general practitioner. And um, uh, Eyelash came out with a video this morning that said that she actually left because um, she could be imprisoned for overstaying her um, visa in Kuwait. Okay. Before she returns to the Middle East again to be with her loving husband and her pets that she considers her family. Yeah. So this video went up a couple days ago. It's kind of her just sitting in her car screaming. Um, we can listen to what she has to say. I haven't watched it. Uh -huh. Really, I, I haven't. I mean, I used to do, guys, honestly, I used to do a once through. Like, I'd watch it ahead of time and think, like, oh, you know, should I say that? Should I say that? I don't do that anymore. <laughs> like, like, with Amber Lynn and Foodie, I, I don't do that anymore. Well, you're not doing it with Eugenia either. And um, to some degree, Jordy, I think that you should because you end up interrupting what they're saying and asking questions about what they're about to tell you. Right. And if you at least have a heads up on that, then you're not going to be like, oh, well, if I had just waited a second, my my question would have been answered. So the first reaction is my first take. If that mm -mm. matters, it probably doesn't. <laughs> Let's start. Oh, you're just getting lazy, dude. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Cameo. It's been, give me $50. Yeah. I still wish you a happy ho, ho, holiday! Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what you heard. What? I am Muslim, but I can still wish you a happy ho, ho! Okay, now we're listening from the beginning. I'm a Muslim, but I can still wish you a ho, ho, ho! Oh my god, I totally just... I mean, I'm almost, I'm almost tempted to buy her cameo to send to Jordy because it was just driving nutties. But it it would like he'd also then have it, right? Like so he could play it. Happy holiday What is she doing? A better gift to give someone you love than a personal video from me they can keep forever and ever. Mm -hmm. Get yours now. And yes, I am Muslim, but I can still wish you a happy ho ho holiday Cameo today. Mm -hmm. Guys, 
welcome back to another video. Literally, the the Muslims I know in my community do not have a problem saying Merry Christmas to the people who they know are are Christians. Like it's not that big of a deal, for real. Um, I know what you're thinking. I'm thinking that that cameo intro was insane. <laughs> I am a Muslim, but I can wish you a ha, 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 be holiday. If I were to buy someone a foodie beauty cameo, it, it, it wouldn't even be a gag gift. Like, I would have to dislike that person. <laughs> I'm back in Canada. I know a lot of you expected me to just take off my hijab. <laughs> Dude, I don't, you know what? I think she's an atheist. She's an atheist. She really doesn't care. She has no problem disre disrespecting anybody's religion at this point. Um, but uh, the reality is Muslims see Jesus as a prophet. They don't see him as the Christ child, as the son of God. They don't see him that way. But um, they don't have a problem with him. So it's not like um, they have to go out of their way to like try and shit on Christmas. Go live a lot, I know, okay. So I am, I have a lot of things. I did not expect her to take off the hijab. Sorry for the quick pause. I think that she genuinely likes wearing the hijab because she's able to hide stuff. Mm -hmm. I, there's there's no thing. part of me that thinks that she likes wearing it out of respect or for its intended purpose as a religious garment. Or f she likes it because it shapes her face. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we can we can cover up more. Right. I didn't think that she was going to take the hijab. No, 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 no to take care of and do and i just find that the videos are more safe for me right now because honestly um mm -hmm. you know it's just realistically unfortunately some people ruin the fun for everyone right it's not safe for me to go live right now i get stalked i get followed around and it's just not cool so you know I do you have any proof of that that that's actually happening to you or are you just going by something that you saw in a comment? Do you know that that's actually happening to you? Because if it was, you could contact whatever the Canadian equivalent of the FBI is and tell them, hey, I'm, a, uh, I'm an internet celebrity and I've got a stalker. And they would actually like open a case on it. But I, I have a feeling that you're full of shit. I'm trying to safeguard my privacy. Chantal, who is stalking you? Who is who is following you? Mm -hmm. So I know what she's referring to. So there was a donation sent in French Fried Girls chat maybe like a week ago. And it was this woman saying that Chantal... I don't know too much about the situation, but apparently Chantal called some woman's deceased children gremlins mm. and that woman said that she was going to come up to canada and deal with it um it was it was worded very vaguely we didn't really know what that woman meant by that but she said basically when you get to canada chantal i'm coming up there and handling this so it's kind of like oh gosh like what do you mean by that so i just think like with everything that happened with marty over the summer in addition to this Mm -mm. I, she's just Ch Chantal <laughs> it's, it's Chantal who gets like 8,000 views on her YouTube videos I'm not safe <laughs> what is live streaming going to do in terms of putting you in a harmful situation that this isn't. What, because this was pre-recorded and now you're home? Right. <laughs> People could still identify the area in the background. I mean, we live in the age of... Well, and she already doxxed herself on that other video where she was showing off her car anyway. She was showing off with reflections of her aunt's house in the in the windows, so... Okay. Geo-guesser. Oh my god. I, I can't believe this. I'm not safe. <laughs> 
these were in my car. Remember these? <laughs> I'm trying to safeguard my um, privacy right now. So, uh, yeah. Um, when I'm settled into my own apartment uh, or house, I'm not sure what I'm going to be renting. Um, I will film, like in the kitchen, my bedroom, stuff like that. I just want to show the outside of my location or anything like that. I'll be very careful. I'm being very careful this trip. There are literally, like, psychotic people who are on my tail, and I just, yeah, it's just, I'm trying to be more responsible for my own security and just my own privacy more than anything, you know? That's why you should look, like, as outrageous as possible every time you go outside. You're like, oh, yes, I'm a practicing Muslim. I'm going to wear a hijab. I'm going to wear a, you know, a white giant sweater so that, you know, I'm, I'm, very visible to everybody around me. Um, like I said, I know lots of practicing Muslims in Orange County who do not dress the way you dress. So I don't know what the hell you're on about here. So, you know, I just think that it's interesting that she'll come on here and she'll say, you know, I need to be careful. People are after me. People are following me. But when it came to Marty... And some of the other people who made these vague claims and these vague uh, plans to come and visit her, or do something to her in real life. It was like, you know, she had big balls. She was on here saying, I'm not intimidated easily. Come on, come on up to Canada. Do your worst. You know, it was very like popped collar, shoulders forward kind of an attitude towards some of these people. But now that she's actually in Canada and a week ago, someone sent in a super chat to FFG saying, I'm going to come and handle this. Now, all of a sudden, oh, I, I got to be careful. It's like, where was that big balls attitude when you were over in the Middle East? Well, she's probably trying to do the damsel in distress thing, just like Eugenia Cooney, and hoping that uh, she'll get some extra donations out of it. I can't live stream because it would put me in danger. Is she for real? <laughs> Is she for real? I mean, that would, in my opinion, like, that would sound silly to me for a YouTuber that gets, like, seven, eight times the views that Chantal does. Uh, so the fact that Chantal gets, like, what, like 10,000 views anymore? Less than 10... <laughs> This is a sweater from Pennington's. We will Pennington's bees, um, but this is from Pennington's and it's a 4X. So again, it just depends how it's made, where it's from, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I wear anything. The only place I really wear 3X is from Maurice's. They, they're made big. So if you want your clothes made big, I would go there. Um, I wear between a 3X and a 5X. Depends. So anyways, I have a busy day. I'm going to go get my car serviced. Look, I'm not getting rid of this car. Like I said, it's paid off and I don't have to worry about car payment. So that's awesome for that. Um, I haven't had to... I mean, this is the first time I haven't had a car payment. Like, we have the SUV in Kuwait. And despite what a lot of people think, that's Salah's car. He pays his own... How are you almost 40 and this is the first time you have a car paid off? And you were getting a lot of money on your internet channels. Like, how is it, how, how is it possible that you've only been in apartment buildings, you've never owned any property, and this is the first time you've had a car paid off, and clearly you didn't do it by yourself, right? Um, he's paid his own bills before me. He will continue to pay his own bills without me, okay? <laughs> um, you know, people say, I'm broke, I'm broke. Well, then how can I afford to pay for two households and two vehicle payments? Um, and you just said Salah pays for his own bills. So are you paying for his bills? Or is he paying for his bills? Which is it? Because you just contradicted yourself within, like, one second. All these debts I'm paying back. Uh-huh. Did, did she just contradict herself? Yes. Wait, 
I, I need to make sure I heard that clearly. A busy day. I'm going to go get my car serviced. Look, I'm not getting rid of this car. Like I said, it's paid off and I don't have to worry about car payments. Okay. So, whoever paid off this car, it was not Chantal Soro. Right. I'm guessing it was a family member. If it actually is paid off and this isn't a lie. But there's no way that with everything going on and all the debt and everything that she had to pay for out in the Middle East, there's no way that she was a, or, or this was a priority for her. No. Payment, so that's awesome for that. Um, I haven't had to, I mean, this is the first time I haven't had a car payment. Like, we have the SUV in Kuwait, and despite what a lot of people think, that's Salah's car. Okay. So she is acknowledging that the ownership of that SUV that has all the plastic on it, you know, that SUV they have with, like, the paper in the windows and everything? Mm -hmm. That's his car. He takes care of it. He is the owner of that vehicle. He is financially responsible. Right. She is communicating that to me right now. Despite what a lot of people think, you know, that I pay for that car, that's his car. It's his financial responsibility. Okay. Now we have that on the table. Okay. He pays his own, he's paid his own bills before me. He will continue to pay his own bills without me, okay? Um, you know, people say, I'm broke, I'm broke. Well, then how can I afford to pay for two households and two vehicle payments? And two vehicle payments. So then she acknowledges that she's paying for the car? So but she said one of them's paid off. So, where the fuck did that statement even come from? Two vehicle payments? First of all, you just said Salah is responsible for his own car. And you said yours is paid off. So, you're not paying for this shit. Why are you lying? So, like, I'm guessing, like, the, what the two payments were, or slash are, or the one on this one that she's in right now, and the one that's in Kuwait... But she just got done telling us that it was his financial responsibility. That's his car. Right. He's taken care of bills before me. He'll take care of bills <laughs> after me. But she just said, well, if you guys think I'm broke, how am I paying for... Is, is everybody else on the same page? Like, what is she talking about? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Was, it, was that a slip? <laughs> Doesn't make sense. And, you know, the thing about this whole, like, Chantal has no money thing, she will use that when it's convenient. When she, na when she needs to make it look like she has money, she'll tell the audience she has money. And when it's convenient for her to look like she's broke, she'll say that she's broke. So when people are saying all the time, oh, Salah's only with you for papers and, you know, because you pay for rent and stuff, she'll come on the screen and say, guys, what do you mean Salah is using me for rent money and all this other stuff? I don't have any money. You guys are saying it all the time. I'm broke. I'm broke. You're right. I'm broke. I don't have any money. So how am I paying his rent and all this other stuff if I'm broke? So in a scenario like that, she'll agree with the audience and say, yeah, I'm broke. But when she's in here and she's flexing and saying things like, yeah, two car payments, two leases. Mm, I pay rent for two different places. Y'all are calling me broke? Think again. You, you see what I mean? It's convenient when it is and convenient when it isn't. So which is it? Um, and all these debts I'm paying back. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. People are so willing to contradict themselves to fit their narrative. But what? That's what you just did. Right. <laughs> it's almost as if she has a big mirror in her windshield. She's just looking at herself narrating this. <laughs> oh, my God. But it's just... Anyway. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, I'm just going to get this car cleaned up, detailed, serviced, and we're good to go. The Kia will be brand new. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, just other than normal wear and tear, it's fine. You know, I'm not going to, I'm definitely not going to get another car payment right now. So, anyways, um, so, yeah, I guess that's... I think that she's still paying for the rent in the Middle East, unless... 
unless they moved out of that apartment that they were in. If Salah goes back to the, t- the type of living situation that he had when we first saw him in Kuwait back in October of 2022, then I think that Chantal will pay the rent for that. But if he's staying in that apartment, which I don't think he is, just because she told us that she was doing a lot of cleaning prior to leaving the Middle East. And that kind of told me, it's like, oh, you need to leave an apartment somewhat nice so that you don't get charged a cleaning fee or whatever. They they probably moved out of there and then he got a single living situation similarly to what he had originally. Remember whatever. Remember you do remember when she first got to the Middle East and everyone was saying like, "Oh, Salah lives in a closet. He lives in a like a a broom closet or whatever." I think, you know, if he goes back to a situation like that, I don't know how much that would be a month, but I think that wherever he's living, Chantal's paying for it and she's paying for the SUV payment. Cuz I think they're I think they're leasing that. They don't own that car. No, 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 no. Well, then what happens to the cat? Like if he goes to some tiny little studio apartment, is that, like, is the cat just going to be stuck inside a tiny little studio apartment all day? My cat's an indoor cat. I have a two-bedroom condo. And I do let him come out on the balcony with me when he wants to. How, I mean, how are you going to have that cat if you downsize Salah to a studio like a small studio but as far as who paid off this car maybe a family member I'm not sure about that to talk about the hijab um, like I said I know people are expecting me to go back to myself i mean i can still be myself and wear a hijab this is my religion this is also uh it's just i'm i'm gonna stay covered like is it can you tell us a little bit about your religion if this is really your religion can you tell us how often you actually go to services what it looks like when you are practicing your religion how you meditate and pray for your religion can you give us a little more background on this rather than just putting on a hijab and being like, well, yes, I'm Muslim now. Because you're being accused of culture, cultural um, appropriation, right? Or, yeah, I think that's what it's called. Um, and it seems more so that you're just trying to hide your double chin. Like, that's what the takeaway is, I think, for most people in this scenario. Especially for those of us who actually know Muslim people that don't wear a hijab. And uh, they actually attend religious ceremonies, right? I know people expecting it. And it's kind of... You know, disheartening to see people think that I'm just taking religion as a joke. I'm not a perfect Muslim. Nobody is perfect. I. It's disheartening to see and hear that people think that I'm not taking Islam seriously. Oh, boy, I wonder what could have given people that impression, Chantal. I mean, the fact that the whole reason why you started this to begin with is because someone matched with you on Tinder and sent you a rose emoji Mm -hmm. from the other side of the world. And you ran off to the other side of the world, married this person, and became a part of his religion. You know, what would give people the impression that you're not taking this seriously? I don't I don't know either. I'm still pretty new. I mean, it hasn't even... Well, I don't think Salah is taking very seriously either if he's using Tinder to hook up with people. Right? I mean, that's a, I'm in my 20s or 30s or whatever, and I just want, like, easy sex kind of, like, that's not somebody who um, is a, a devout religious person. I think most of us at this point have the impression that she's an atheist. It's been a full year, and I just... 
You know, it's, I'm not perfect. No, not all the time. I, you know, but I mean, this is a hijab. Okay. I, I wear this because I have to cover. So for those of you, even though I've said it many times, there seems to be a lot of people who don't know. I can, I have to cover everything except for my hands, sometimes my feet, you know, when I pray, I cover my feet and my face. So I have to, um, cover my neck always and the chin yes my double chin even okay well i don't know what to tell you because i know other muslims in my community who don't who do not have to do that it's not fucking required so i don't know why it's required for you other than you had to move out to the middle east so maybe it was required in kuwait over whatever cultural laws that they have there but it's certainly not required in canada so yes i have to cover everything now when i'm in the house i never cover anything when i'm alone with my husband i don't wear a hijab but just because i'm in canada i'm not going to stop being who i am and who i think that's bs mm -hmm. i think she likes wearing this because she feels like she's safe because chantal has had issues with um balding recently over the past couple years and I think that she likes to wear the hijab because she's able to cover up and everything. So I think she's when when she's around him, she does her best to look as presentable and um, good as possible. So I think this includes wearing this. Well, I am. You know, I've seen this comment a lot. But well, I mean, female alopecia is a thing. Um, I think it mostly affects very elderly people and um black females it's kind of more in that community but um most people who are experiencing female alopecia will wear wigs right it, it's quite common now to wear wigs to have that be your backup plan um i honestly think this is much more about her triple chin people and i'm not getting down on you i don't mind i expect this kind of reaction from people you know i know people are finding it dis they're in disbelief that i'm muslim still you know and i never thought i would ever be in this position i would never be who i am today but um this feels like who, like truly who i am and you know if it wasn't yeah it would be just i would take it off easily but i'm not ever going to take it off um even even if I'm never with Salah again, that's not going to happen, inshallah. But let's say I did it. That is such a bizarre thing to just, like, throw out there. That is such a bizarre thing to throw out there. Like, um, you know, I have kind of a rocky road with my boyfriend. I've, I've talked about this a little bit about, like, we have our ups and downs. And sometimes we break up and sometimes we get back together. There is not a time that I'm going to be like, I don't know if I'm not going to be with him again. Because that's like, that's like, um, that's calling it out. That's like, that's like making it, willing it into being that, um, that it's not going to work out. Right. And at least for my relationship, I would like to push forward and see, you know, what we can do with this and be together because I really enjoy my time with him. Um, I just know that we have like certain difficulties that we need to work through. But um, she's not even talking about that. She's not, she's not like, well, we have some difficulties and blah, blah, blah. No, she's, she's talking about this like it, it well, you know, we just might not be together. She's every other live stream she does when she talks about him, she is way the fuck over the top saying that she loves him so much. He loves her so much. Oh, everything's great. Everything's coming up roses, right? We have no problems that we're working through right now. But then all of a sudden, she's like, well, if we're not together again. But that's not going to happen. Because in the Muslim religion, what? 
<laughs> okay. All right. I, we weren't together anymore. Me being Muslim isn't just have anything to do with him, you know? It's me, me too. So okay, this is a decision okay. I'm making. It's not, no one's forcing me to do it. It's, it's a decision I've made all on my own. And so you would have joined that religion had not a year and a half ago that person messaged you on Tinder? Mm hmm. That's what she's saying. So you would have done this on your own. It had nothing to do with the fact that someone sent you a rose emoji on Tinder and asked you to come out to the Middle East to live with them and pay for everything? Mm -hmm. Okay. While I'm in Canada and anywhere else in the world, when you see me in the public eye on camera, I'm going to be wearing a hijab. So those are the parts of my aura. It's called aura. I'm always going to cover. You're only going to see my face. You're only going to see my hands. You're only going to see my... Um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> you know, you, that's pretty much it. Um, there are a lot of things. Yes, I do that. Technically, um, you know, a lot of people will argue are against Islam. Why don't you just actually take care of your health, lose the weight and feel more comfortable in your skin? Like, why are you putting yourself in such a position that you feel like you need to hide everything? But you're not hiding anything because you're also going online all the time and live streaming like this. Wearing lipstick, stuff like that. To each their own. I'm not, you know, people shouldn't judge other people, especially non-Muslims. I have non-Muslim people who show their hair, who are trying to tell me what is it. Oh, so now Chantal, the Muslim, is going to tell other people, mm -hmm. the, the non-Muslims, how they should think, feel and react to this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when a year and a half ago she was uh, running around half naked all the time oh my gosh appropriate hijab you can even look this up many 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 Muslims actually wear the uh, hoodies as long as you're covering your aura as long as you're covering that's technically a hijab um, I don't always have to wear a veil for it to be a cover you know uh i don't know it's just like i mean it's fine you can go on hothijab.com uh h-a-u-t-e and check for yourself it's, mm -hmm. it's perfectly fine um chantelle do you think maybe maybe you should be discussing other things rather than trying to act as a representative for this religion which you clearly don't know much about right um, do you think it's possible that you shouldn't be trying to speak as an authority on the subject and that you can just do your thing however you want to do it and talk about other things that interest you, whether that be makeup, whether you want to do your mukbangs, whether you want to talk about your health progress, which, by the way, we haven't gotten a blood sugar reading in a while now, right? Or could you find something else to do with yourself? Can you join like a book club? Do you read? I bet you don't. So even in the Quran, it doesn't say you must wear a chiffon hijab to, uh, to... Oh yes, I'm absolutely positive. She's read the entire Quran at this point, right? You just became Muslim last year. I'm sure like you, like, would you do like the read the Bible in a year sort of strategy. <laughs> you haven't read the fucking Quran. You're so full of shit. Be appropriate. It just says cover, cover yourself, like, in a, the most general, vague sense possible. Oh, I need the AC on. It's 30, mm -hmm. 33 Fahrenheit. <laughs> and I have the AC on, so Allah was like, you need a winter. I was about to say, it's freezing. Technically, it isn't freezing start at 33. It's freezing outside, and she needs the air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Jacket, let's go, because they have, a, like, a North Face um, at the mall, and I'm like, I don't want a winter jacket. Like, I am not going to wear it. I've had winter jackets. I might get a jacket. But, I mean, I don't. I don't need one. I'm hot right now. I have my undershirt. I have this. I'm covered on my head. 
So, you know, I, don't, I didn't even wear my... Isn't that wild? It's winter time. It's freezing outside. And she's here, sitting here with the air conditioning on telling us, I'm not getting a winter coat because I have no use for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, my God. What's a shacket? I don't know. I've a never shirt heard, jacket? Um, I've never heard of that before. That's Yeah, I know. That was the first thing that came to my mind, too. It's like, what? Is that... Is that like a Snuggie? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> That's what it, like a shirt, yeah. I've never heard that before. Hmm. Scarf today. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just busy visiting. I'm going to be visiting people and taking care of appointments and everything like that. I have a lot of appointments to do. And I'm running into a wall because... Can't get beauty um, back. The wait time, I called around. For most family doctors, is like two to three years. I mean, that's where the healthcare system is failing. Right now, at, let, let's say at the Montfort Hospital, okay? Look, now she's going to be critical of the healthcare system that she doesn't help pay into. <laughs> she only came back to Canada so that she could take use of this free program. And now that it's delayed or it's, it's taking uh, a time period that isn't to her liking, she's going to critique it. <laughs> well no so I, I I don't believe that for one second because look Canada has a better health care system than the US does and um, if we can get in once a year for a um, physical and for our gynecological appointments and our mammograms and things like that I don't believe for a second that it's going to take two to three years for her to get her first physical in Canada. I I just don't. I I think she's full of shit. (laughs) My God. Okay. Right now, I saw on the news, the wait time at the emergency is 20 hours. So... Look, it's just, I don't know how long it's going to take me. And that's why I'm here indefinitely for now, because I don't know when I'm going to be able to get the the healthcare that I need. And yeah, that's some bullshit too. Most um, emergency rooms use a method of prioritizing patients called ABC, which I think is airway, blood and chest pains, right? <clears throat> so the first patients they will take are the ones that are um, struggling with breathing and she struggles with breathing all the fucking time right she was struggling with it just sitting there in the car um, blood obviously you can't have somebody be bleeding out so that's another one that gets prioritized and chest pains obviously because somebody might be having a heart attack that's what they prioritize if you're there for anything else if it's like i think i have pneumonia i might have strep throat i might have covid19 these things are going to be lower on the totem pole because they don't they're the er's priority is to save people from dying if you're not gonna die they're not gonna keep you there so the last time i was in an er was october i think it was and i was sent there in an ambulance so i did get priority i i was prioritized because before I even got there, they had taken my blood pressure and I was bottoming out. You know, I was 80 over 40. You're supposed to be 120 over 80. And it was because my potassium level dropped to a fatal level of 2.1. You're supposed to be between 3.5 and 4.5. And I dropped. Um, 
because I had been throwing up a lot from the pain from my dog bite injury and I was losing nutrients and I didn't realize it. Amber is giving you outrageous numbers. I don't think that in any Western country that the type of wait times that she's discussing are at all realistic unless you are a completely healthy person who does not actually need care. You know, there's long wait lists and I have a lot to take care of. So, so if you're in Canada, I'd imagine that you would be able to pay out of pocket to be seen quicker because with the public health insurance everybody's going to go for that because it's included or free as she likes to say um but if she were to pay privately she could be seen next week um the united states is only that like we don't we don't have public health care uh if, if you want to be well and on top of it she said that that's exactly what she was doing in kuwait that she didn't trust their public health care system so she was paying out of pocket for all of her treatments. Seeing it's like you you pay out of pocket. Like there there's memes about the United States uh, and their health care. It's it's astronomical. Um, the monthly premium for health care is very high, and then if you don't have health insurance and you, you have an accident, you go to the emergency room. People leave uh, with like twenty thousand dollar bills. <laughs> so yeah, I love my favorite um, meme about Canadian health care is um, Breaking Bad Canada, Walter White gets diagnosed with cancer and gets treated. <laughs> so, that's, like, that's the end of it. He doesn't have to. <laughs> yeah, you'll get seen eventually. Your appointment might you know, be in two years, but you'll get seen. It's still technically mm. free. But kind of seems like wherever the options I don't think that um, they would make her wait two years if the readings that she's telling us about her blood sugar and her weight are accurate I think she's full of shit star for her in healthcare whether it's in Kuwait or in Canada she's gonna have to pay out of pocket I don't know if Chantal can afford to wait three, two to three years to be seen. Oh, I'm just going to need to be here for... But I feel like a lot of what a doctor would tell her, she already knows what to do. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, really. But what are they going to lose weight? What, seriously, seriously do, you, do you really need a, an appointment for a family doctor to tell you that? For a while, and... Uh... Yeah, so it doesn't mean I'm not going to ever see Salah. We can visit each other. But uh, right now, and you know, the pets are keeping him company. And I What does that mean? We can visit each other? So she's living in Canada indefinitely. Yeah. There's no way she's going to fly out to the Middle East just to visit. Uh-uh. No, she hates... No, she's going to try and bring him to Canada. She's going to try and bring him to Canada. And quite frankly, I'm surprised that he couldn't have applied for a Syrian refugee program in Canada. Because didn't uh, Trudeau, like, really open the door on that, like, a few years back? When, um, I think it was Germany was being really difficult about it. And so Trudeau's like, well, no, no, we'll take them here in Canada, right? Um, so couldn't he just apply over the, like, I, I don't know. I don't know their circumstances. It's that trip, the flying back and forth and everything. It's like 20 plus hours for her. Mm -hmm. She's not going to do that. Mm -mm. We can visit each other. So let him come to Canada. Yes. Oh boy. Purposely. I could have easily brought her with me. Well, not very easily. Um, I really am kind of real. I feel so bad doing that, knowing that they're like going to be on the plane for so long and stressed out. I don't know. It's really stressful. But also, he wants them to be there. Like, the bull crap. Bull crap. 
He doesn't care about those pets until you were the one that wanted both those pets. And the reason why you didn't want to bring that cat back to Canada is because you didn't want to be obligated. You didn't want to. Yeah, and it's expensive, too. Like, um, when we transported my ex-boyfriend's cats from Virginia to California, I think it was like a couple hundred dollars per cat. They had to have... Um, certain vaccinations in advance. They had to have certain paperwork in advance. They had to be in very specific um, carriers. And they were going to be riding like in the cargo section of the plane. Um, and one of them, they also take them out and inspect them in the airport. And one of his cats kind of like ran away. So we ended up having to drive that cat out with us because we couldn't get him back in the carrier to actually get on the plane. Well, I wasn't even there at that point. Like, I received the other one on when she arrived in Orange County. But um, he said he couldn't get him back in the carrier. I don't know how he got him home, so I kind of feel like he was probably lying to me, but... We ended up driving veggie cross country. But there, there is a process. You just have to go through the paperwork of it. Make sure that they've gotten all the appropriate shots. Um, and yeah, it can, it can be really stressful for them. Because they're going to be in the cargo hold the entire time be obligated on your flight and you don't want to be obligated so as long as you're living in Canada because the flight for you is very hectic so let alone taking care of yourself now you have to take care of a cat too mm -hmm. that's not a very attractive of an option for you and then it's the fact of having to take care of it when you're in Canada if she's in Canada and she doesn't have any pets she can do what she wants I mean she's gonna do what she oh but she wants BBJ back she's gonna Try and take um, French fried girl to small claims court, right? So she can get BBJ back. She wants regardless, but you know she doesn't have to have that. Uh, thing, like, oh, I don't have to buy treats. I don't have to take it to the vet. I mean, not that she was doing that anyway, but it's just one less thing she has to do. Pets love him too, and Julia's close to him as well. And you know. Um, he's taking good care of them and they're there to keep him company, make him less lonely. He loves the pets. Um, so he's someone who never was, was raised with a cat. And I said, you're going to love the cats pretty soon. Sure enough. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I guess that's it. I better get going. I have a lot to do today. Oh my gosh. I got, I have an appointment soon for the car and, uh, <sighs> hate waiting. <laughs> patience my friend mm -hmm. so um so that's that's why i'm dressed like this you know i'm not wearing a i have a feeling this whole story is just to create an excuse for why she doesn't actually set up the doctor's appointment hijab or abaya i didn't bring any of my abayas because i just people don't really wear them here and i just wanted to be more casual here access to like bigger casual clothes i was about to say in the Middle East, it's probably way more common, but when she's walking around her little suburb of Canada, there's no one wearing hijabs and habayas, so she probably feels like she sticks out more, in addition to, well... Right. Uh, in the winter here is probably makes me more comfortable, and um, also with the toque, it's a winter, so wearing a toque on top of like a chiffon, I don't know if I really like that look as much. So I'm just wearing an undercap. It's a hijab that goes to here, covers everything. And it covers my neck and my chins. If you want to say chins, whatever, I don't care. Um, and I don't have to worry about it, you know, and then I have my hat. You said chins five minutes ago. Mm -hmm. She said, yes, it has to cover my double chin too. Ha ha ha. If you guys want to call it chins, whatever. <laughs> what? Hat on top of that because it's nice and warm. And I'm warm. I'm perfectly fine. I'm perfectly comfortable this way. You know, I have no complaints. So, but as for taking off the hijab, no. I don't know why people would think that. It'd be, you People have so many um, 
theories about me and how I feel and, and you're so wrong. You're wrong about every single thing. You're wrong about me being a fake Muslim. You're wrong about me. Mm-hmm. Um, and no, I'm not a perfect Muslim, but it doesn't mean I'm fake and I don't believe in God and Allah. Okay. And you're so wrong about me wanting to eat pork. I'm never going to eat pork again. I haven't. God and Allah. You sure you remember what your religion's about? Now, I will be honest that sometimes I eat not. That was actually debunked. She made some episode, or I saw something on Twitter, where she went to the grocery store and she got Chef Boyardee. And Chef Boyardee has pork in it. Uh oh. Uh -oh. (laughs) Maybe we'll do that one next. On halal uh, meat while I'm here because it's harder to access unless you go to a specific restaurant. You can buy it in the grocery store too, but um, sometimes I go out and there not everything is halal, and it's just you know I'll eat halal where I can, but the main thing is I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to eat pork, and I'm not going to drink, and I'm also not going to smoke weed uh, or take edibles. I I thought when I came here I would be bull crap. <laughs> Bull crap. She's not going to smoke weed. Come on. Craving it so bad. And there's dispensaries I was driving by. And I really just, you know what I like? I like the feeling of a clear head. I was thinking of how I felt when I was like high. And how, I mm. no, I think it's worse for my depression. I really do. And I have a bit of a trauma from all those wheelchairs. I swear. I don't, I don't think I would enjoy it the same way. I want to turn a new leaf. I want to be different here. I don't want to go back. From all those wheelchairs. Mm. Did she get the wheelchair service at the airport? Did we just not see that on her videos? Was she complaining about walking through an airport when in fact she had wheelchair service? Like I suggested she should request because I myself have nerve damage in my leg (laughs) and have requested the same service. I can't even, dude. I, I, I had such a problem from all those wheelchairs. What wheelchairs are you talking about? What are you talking about, Chantel? to my old habits i don't miss those i never missed them Mm -hmm. so when people say you look so much happier i'm happy to be able to see my family and take care of things but i'm actually really sad because i miss my pets and salah and um i don't miss any of the bad habits i used to have i don't miss them at all Mm -hmm. whatsoever so that's false as well anyways there's my sermon for today um yeah but other than that um hijab is staying on and I'm moving on. <laughs> so, like I said, my goal is just to keep, um, once I have more updates about health appointments and things, I want to share my health journey. Um... Mm-hmm. Sermon's a No way this lasts. <laughs> as soon as she... Sermon's a Christian word, but okay. She experiences the first slight inconvenience or discomfort in everyday life. She's running to the dispensary. Well, not running. She's driving to the dispensary, getting out of her car and walking inside the dispensary. Mm -hmm. If she hasn't already. I want to make good habits. I want to have a clear head. I want to turn a new leaf. I want to, I want to, I want to. Chantal, the found. I want to go down to Oklahoma and have some cottage cheese and mustard with Amber Lynn. (laughs) Of what you're doing is all fake it's all because you matched with some random guy on the other side of the world on tinder this is not you being genuine this is you being desperate for a man's approval and that man's approval the only reason why you have it i mean like have his approval like is because you pay for stuff of his you pay his rent you pay his car payment you pay for things that he wants so you're the person that said all you had to do was fake love me. So he's fake loving you. Now you have to hold up your end of the deal and pay for everything. And that stuff. And yeah, just share my journey of, you know, moving out on my own. But um, 
eventually the goal is to live together again, but I have to take care of my things here right now, you know, so, um, but anyway, we'll see what the future holds. I'm taking it day by day. I'm just literally taking it day by day right now. Um, just trying to, you know, stay positive, not feel too lonely and just keep myself very busy, which I am. So anyway, I'm going to do a tour of different places, like in keep herself busy. Chantal, you don't work. You don't go to the gym. You don't have friends. How, how are you keeping busy? By getting takeout and parking on a random road in the suburbs of Cornwall and talking in your car for 15 minutes? What do you do for the other 23 hours, 45 minutes a day? Keep busy. Honestly, why doesn't she get a part-time job? Ottawa, my hometown, stuff like that. So um, I will definitely have a video for you guys. I want to do a tour of the mall in Cornwall <laughs> to show you guys. And it's not far between Ottawa and Cornwall. So You're grieving as labored, girlfriend. Your breathing is way labored. I can go on. I love driving, so we'll uh, just do some videos like that here and there. So I'll see you guys later. I'll let you know how much my car was and what was wrong with and then I'll probably end the video. So thank you guys for watching and yeah, see you in the next clip. So my car is fine. The only thing I need done is some brakes, rotors, and pads. And after labor and everything, it's going to be quite costly. It's going to be like $1,500, but I'll have good brakes for a little while. So that's good. So I'm getting that fixed right now. And in the meantime, I'm enjoying some complimentary coffee and some dad's oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. Okay, you guys, I'm grocery shopping. And oh, this is what people were talking about. This is when she went to the grocery store. So apparently she gets a can of Chef Boyardee. <laughs> and uh, look at the things I found. Um, I got some pasta sauce for cheese. Pasta. And uh, I got some lunch mates, the turkey and cheese ones with a little Kit Kat. And I also got some stovetop. We don't have this in Kuwait. These are basically things I've been missing. We don't have in Kuwait. Uh, Alphagetti. Alphagetti is one of my favorite things what? ever. And also, look at all these things. Uh, flakes of turkey. It's so good for sandwiches. I have some hamburger helper. I'm so excited for this. I've been really craving it. I can't believe it. And uh, here we have some beef ravioli i checked the ingredients there's no pork so we're good to go so i got a few cans of that because uh, you know how i saw people on twitter saying otherwise that there's pork in chef boyardee i mean i don't know i don't know mm -hmm. she said she looked at the ingredients label and saw that there was no pork mm -hmm. i saw a different song being sung on twitter oh, i love it and a big block of cheese some soup and some other things all right guys thanks for watching this video i hope you enjoy what are you gonna make the hamburger helper out of if you don't have any beef if you don't have any ground beef i mean you have that's literally one of the ingredients for fucking making that enjoyed it and i will see you in the next what is this thanks for oh watching. it's a snowman is that like, what, what it you, is? What? What are you talking about? Like, you sure it's not a marshmallow man? Okay. All right. I guess we're done with this video.